On behalf of the Frank family and the Caramaros family, I want to welcome you to the most amazing Thanksgiving weekend of your life. <laughs> and uh, the name of the song that we just sang is called God of the Redeemed. And that was chosen on purpose because of the, the deep meaning it has for both Courtney and Mitchell as they are those who, if you know them, you can't go five minutes without them talking about Jesus and how he has absolutely transformed their life. And they wanted them to be a part of this celebration, not just as a religious formality, but because of a person that they have fallen in love with. Mitchell and Courtney, you all will change the world. And through your children, the world will be further changed. And to you, we raise our glass and wish you many, many non-colicky children. That's, that's kind of an inside joke about Mitchell's first few days of life. We wish you all the best. We love you. People have been asking me over the course of this last week, um, hey Gully, was it hard for you to have to give up your Thanksgiving and uh, fly out and come to Houston to be a part of a wedding? And I said, you know, not at all. This is the kind of couple that you're not trying to like scribble notes on a, you know, you're trying to figure out what could I possibly say about these two? This is, this is the couple that if you let me, I could just go on and on and on about. And I know that's why you're here today too, because you could go on and on and on about the impact these two have made in your lives individually and also as a couple. Not everyone here knows Courtney um, and Mitchell as deeply as I do. And um, I just, I want to tell y'all that their life and their relationship, it's not about themselves. Their life and their relationship is about other people. And the biggest thing about them is that their relationship is centered on Jesus. And for those of you that, that don't know him, when you look at them, you know him.
I remember the first time Courtney grabbed me in a conversation. Um, I actually had, I oversee a, a college service and we actually have hundreds of college students who come to this service. And so I remember telling one of our leaders, we need to up our game as far as taking care of visitors when they walk in the door and caring for them. And I actually recommended, what if Mitchell and Courtney did this? I had just met you two. I didn't know you real well, but I just thought you were awesome. I thought you could do the job. And so we put you in that position. And I remember at the end of the semester, we did a debriefing time and I was going around and saying, what did we all learn from this? And what can we do better? And those kind of things. And I remember, Courtney, um, you said, well, what I try to do is every person who walks in the door, I try to meet them, and I try to remember their name, and then I try to find them on campus and call them by their name. We're talking about 700 people who come to this service every Wednesday night. And so I just thought, did she really just say that, or did I just hear something? And she said, you know, I've been to churches before where every person who walks in the door, they're just another person. And I want people to walk in the door. I can't remember everybody's name, but everybody I can. I want to make a mark on them that they're loved by God and loved by us. And I turned and I looked at my assistant and I was like, make sure she never leaves. You know, make sure we keep her forever. And uh, there's something about you that is, uh, there is just a tenacity about you, Courtney, a tenaciousness that you are like, I'm going to remember every person's name. They're going to feel loved when they're around me. And that's why so many of the ladies who are standing to your left uh, were able to say last night, when I met you, I wanted to be your best friend because there's a, a tenacity about you that grabs people in a, in a deep way. And I think that that's, that's true of who you are. But another word I would use to describe you comes from a, a conversation that we had during premarital counseling when you were talking about a rough day at work where you had maybe not done the best and uh, pleased your boss and he had gotten on to you a little bit. And again, that, that same tenacity moved you not to be brazen and just kind of pound down the door, but to lower yourself in humility to go to your boss and say, hey, I repent, I blew it. I'm gonna get better. And I thought, it's, it's pretty common to find people who are tenacious, but it's rare to find a person who has tenacity and it's married with humility. And Mitchell, you're getting a woman who is married tenacity and humility. That's a powerful, potent combination in a, in a woman of God, and that's who you're getting. And you have chosen well by cho choosing a lady who is passionate and tenacious for God, for others, for you, and she's married that with humility. You're getting a, a, a real, uh, prized jewel. And I think about you as a man of God. And who is the man that you are getting today? Obviously, you know that, and that's why you've chosen him. But I was thinking about uh, you, Mitchell, and I thought about one of the uh, first conversations I had with you. And I remember very clearly you said, I just want you to know right off the bat, Carl, I'm not one of those guys who's coming from this broken family and my mess, my life and my dad's all messed up. And so I really needed, you know, you to do that for me. Um, and if you, again, if you were at the rehearsal dinner last night, the way that Mitchell honored his dad and his mom was something that made all the parents in the room say, we want to do this better all over again. But uh, it was unbelievable. But he said, I do want you to know I've been listening to your sermons and I'm a better, I'm a better man and I'm going to be a better husband and a better father because I'm listening to the way you preach. And I thought, Wow, I didn't know anybody was actually listening when I preached. I thought that they were kind of waiting for that to get done so we could go eat lunch. And so to think about the fact that you were saying, no, I'm a better husband, better father, better man of God because of you. The word that comes to my mind for you, Mitchell, is you're a teachable man. And Courtney, again, a rarity in today's society is to put those two words together, teachable and man. And to think that they've actually combo comboed into one human being and you've got him and, he, and he's yours. I think along those lines, another word that comes to my mind was something that was said over and over again last night, and that is the word consistent. People would say over and over again, Mitchell, when I met you, you were so joyful, you were so real, I kept watching to see when it was going to end, because this couldn't be real. And to find out, here we are, it's been days, weeks, months, years, you're my roommate. You've proven time and time again who you are uh, in public is who you are behind closed doors. You're a consistent man. So think about that when you put all those words together, consistent and teachable, tenacious and humble. Put that all together. That is an explosive package that the two of you are becoming. And it reminds me of the verse in, in De Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 32.30 that talks about how if one can put 1,000 to flight, how can two put 10,000 to flight? And I believe that what's happening today is there is a union happening that is going to put 10,000 to flight. Literally meaning you're going to change the world through the love of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit.
people said, Amen. Courtney, I vow to love you today and every day. I give you my everything as a place to dry your tears, share your smile, and heal your wounds. I will race you to forgiveness and win your heart for a lifetime. I will daily lead you to the feet of Jesus. No one will know me as deeply, as fully, and as vulnerably as you will. You will never have to compete for my affection. I will be your most dedicated student and your most gentle teacher. I will make myself an advantage to your dreams and an answer to your needs and a helper in every season of our marriage. You will never need to question my faithfulness. There's no mistake great enough to keep me from pursuing you. There's no battle I would not fight for you. I joyfully accept the risk of loving you without expectation, and surely I will serve you all the days of my life. To God and before our community, I commit to be your suitable helper. I commit to a life of humility, thankfulness, and obedience to God with you so that you may reach the full potential that God has called you to be. I vow to make laughter an integral part of our marriage. I vow to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to anger. I vow to never look for another man the way that I look at you. And because of the precious gift of marriage through Jesus Christ, divorce is not an option. I vow to harness my passion and spirit and wisdom so that we may fully and righteously lead our family. From this day forward, we will not be alone. Where you go, help we go. I vow to trust and submit to your leadership that now covers me. It's my joy to follow you as you follow God. I, Mitchell, receive you, Courtney, as God's gift to me, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, till death do us part. I, Courtney, receive you, Mitchell, as God's gift to me, to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to honor, and to cherish, till death do us part. Well, this is the moment we've all waited for. For as much then, Mitchell and Courtney, as you have covenanted together, according to the teaching of the scripture and in recognition of the laws of this state, I, Carl Gully, by the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel, declare that you are husband and wife. And what God has put together, let no man tear apart. Mitchell, you can kiss your bride. Pretty fun moment. Turn and face the crowd so that they get to celebrate this moment with you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great honor to be the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Mitchell Frank. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> yes! Yes! Tremor of a hope that's growing deep inside Hand to mouth, our secret whispers of a dream To roll our tired skies And with a full heart And opening eyes I see the headlights Turn into sunrise of a world that broke the darkest night you with the full heart and don't 